Okay, let's finish on, uh, on bottle trauma. As you see now, bottle trauma and volume trauma go hand in hand because bottle trauma related mainly to increased plateau pressure because this is, as you said, bottle trauma mainly happens at the alveolar level. And as you can see, plateau pressure is equivalent to tidal volume, which we talked about it in volume trauma and compliance. First of all, the best way to treat or decrease the risk of bottle trauma, of course, lowering the tidal volume. And but find out if the compliance is really poor. Why? If there is pulmonary edema, treat it, right? Please go back to my plateau pressure video because I put some details on that. But some conditions like ARDS, it's hard to uh, improve the compliance because it's related non to non-cartogenic pulmonary edema. So you have to play around and decreasing tidal volume, one of the options. As we said, we keep it less or equal than six mil per kg per ideal body weight. We want to also look at this proximal airway pressure equivalent to flow multiplied by resistance plus alveolar pressure, which equivalent to tidal volume divided by compliance. So let's see how do we lower the plateau pressure in volume control and pressure control. Simply, if you want to decrease the risk of bottle trauma, is simply decrease by simply lowering the proximal airway pressure. Please go back, go back to my videos on plateau pressure and see how the proximal airway pressure related to plateau pressure. I'm not going to go over this now to save time, but lowering the proximal airway pressure can lead to lowering the plateau pressure. So in volume control, because this is a flow target, the only way is to lower the proximal airway pressure is by lowering the flow rate, which we can do. So lowering flow rate or by decreasing what? Tidal volume. By doing these two things, we can lower the proximal area pressure and lowering the peak pressure and decrease the risk of barotrauma. That's another um, evidence that volume trauma and barotrauma are related and goes hand in hand. So those are the quickest or things that you can do to lower the risk of barotrauma and volume trauma and volume control. And pressure control, as you know, it's a pressure target. So you can directly set the proximal airway pressure on the ventilator and simply by decreasing the proximal airway pressure, which is the other on, on ventilator screen, you see inspiratory pressure. You can directly decrease that and decrease the risk of barotrauma. And, and the other way is by decreasing inspiratory time, you can directly decrease tidal volume as we just explained. And also based on this equation, can lower the risk, lower plateau pressure and lower the risk of barotrauma. But it's much easier and easier in pressure control because you can directly set the proximal airway pressure and inspiratory time.